Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book, Theft of Fire, by Devin Erickson. This is a self-published uh, book that uh, he did. He did not go through a traditional publisher. Devin Erickson published this himself through Amazon. And uh, I this book was not on my radar. I would have had no uh, interest in reading the book. However, a few things happened. First, there was a terrific marketing campaign behind this book with Devin and specifically his wife, Christine, who did a lot of the heavy lifting in trying to convince people to read the book. And so uh, there was good word of mouth on the book. There was good um, uh, marketing from their team. And then, of course, Christine reached out to me and said, hey, would you, would you be interested in a copy of the book? So they, uh, they did send me a copy of the book, uh, which I, I do appreciate Christine and Devin for, for sending me that. They did sign my copy, uh, which was very nice of them. And um, uh, so I, I had it in my library, and I, I, t I told them I intended to get to it. I didn't know how long it would take because I don't accept many self-pub books just because there are so many books I have to read that usually a self-pub book, it's either one I'm really interested in that I accept or it's one that I was going to buy anyway. And so um, I picked this up. Uh, this came out back in November, and it's done quite, a, quite successfully on Goodreads and on um, Amazon despite – you know, being a self pub and not having the, the, the publisher marketing. And I have to say for me, I really appreciate the formatting of this book. It's very professional, something that some indies don't have. Um, uh, everything about this book was pretty high quality. I it did, I did appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, if you notice some scratches on here, that was mine. Uh, I brought this to school and uh, it got scratched up at, when I was at my, my work, so I apologize for that. But um, this book is a science fiction book, as you'd probably guess from the cover, Theft of Fire. It's the first book in what's called the Orbital Space series. I don't think it's, I think it was supposed to be a trilogy, but I think it's going to end up being a tetralogy. Um, uh, this is, uh, it's about 480 pages, uh, so it's just just shy of 500 being a tome, but it is fairly small print size, so it's a it's a long book. I think it's about 150 page 150,000 words is what uh, Devin Erickson said in a live stream, and it's also nice because some of my uh, BookTube friends, like uh, Biblio Theory, just reviewed the book and interviewed uh, Devin, and I think uh, John Douglas is gonna review the book because I think he's reading it right now as I record this, and so this book. Um, uh, is it's a science fiction book. And one of the first things that I noticed about this book is it has an incredibly small cast of characters. There really are only three characters to follow, and they're all on the cover. You have um, uh, the main character of Marcus Warnock, who uh, is the owner of a ship, and uh, he's the pilot for that ship. And then you have the woman, uh, Miranda Foxgrove, who is uh, the kind of uh, wealthy heiress to an empire who kind of um, uh, hijacks his, his ship. And then you have the character Leela over here, which I won't give away because there's spoilers about Leela. But um, uh, anyway, it's about the three of them. And really... While there are other, quote, characters in the book that are referenced or characters where they've had connections with these characters, on this page, present in the book, there's really just the three. It really is just the three of them. And so it is quite interesting um, uh, that, that it has such a small cast of characters. It's very rare to, for me to read a book that, like this, quite like this. And so I found it still very enjoyable. Uh, it is very much a good character study of these three characters. Um, uh, particularly the main character, it's from, from, from the first person uh, uh, point of view of Marcus. And you're getting to see... Um, uh, uh, him as basically his ship is hijacked by by this uh, wealthy wealthy girl, and um, uh, he's not the biggest fan of hers to start out the book. He is not a big fan of hers, and so he's kind of trying to find a way to get his ship back. And he's also kind of curious: what is she wanting to do with the ship, and what is her end goal? And so that a lot of that is revealed as the book goes along. And the book, you know, the, some of the positives, the character development in this book is top tier, amazing. It is great character development. Another thing that I talk about is this, this is going to sound weird, but just stick with me, authorial voice. Sometimes when you read a book, it kind of feels kind of bland. You feel like it doesn't have a distinct authorial voice. This happens sometimes in media tie-in fiction books. This happens in some contemporaries where you just don't feel like the book has uniqueness to its style. This author, Devin Erickson, and this is his debut, has a terrific authorial voice. It is clear. It is 
uh, definable. I can understand, uh, you know, if, if you give me a passage from this book and a passage from another book, I would be able to know, without even saying it, any characters from either, I'd be able to know which one is is Devin's because he just has a very specific way of writing scenes and dialogue and, and uh, things like that. So I really did, um, uh, I was very impressed by his authorial style. Uh, also with the book is it is very uh, scientifically researched without being overly researched. Sometimes you read science fiction books, trab pub, indie pub, whatever, and it's just slogs of descriptions of the science and how the science works. And sometimes I'm like, I don't care. I just want to get to the story, get, get to the story already. And this book does not have that. This book does not have those, uh, long, you know, just long, long passages of explaining the technology, which I appreciate it. However, um, uh, going to one of the negatives, I think the biggest negative behind this book is the plotting. I think that this book, you know, there's so much emphasis on the characters. You really get to understand and get in the heads and really get the characters well. But it spends so long with the characters in their heads that it does not give enough time for the actual plot to move forward. And when the plot does move forward, it, it, it just didn't, didn't feel the pacing was right. So uh, uh, the book alternated between going way too slow and way too fast. And the, the actual story I felt was very, very thin and could have been a lot stronger throughout. Um, uh, if, if he had focused a little bit more on plot and a little le less on characters, this would have bumped up quite a lot. And next, the next thing I'm going to talk about is a problem for me as a reader, but uh, again, this is not an objective part of literature. This is just how I feel about books and why I might rate something lower because I do not appreciate this. There is an excessive amount of language, bad language in this book. It is, it is excessive. It is on every page just about. Maybe not, I mean, we probably could find a few pages that there's not any bad language, but it's most pages in the book. And some people are going to are, are going to say that's not a problem for me, and I understand that. I come from a culture that very much does not appreciate swearing. If anyone in my family or friend group were to swear, we would get the weirdest looks from everyone, and we would get in trouble with our with our with our community because we, we don't swear. And so it's just it's such a weird thing when you're reading a book and it's so heavy in that. It's a problem I have with Game of Thrones. It's a problem I have with uh, other science fiction fantasy book series when it's really heavy. And it, it, again, it is heavy here. And um, again, some people talk like that and I understand that. But for me, I don't want to read that in my books. Y you can you can get across that the character is angry with someone without having to resort to that. So that's a preference thing where it didn't work for me. And so it made the book less enjoyable. My whole scale of a book generally is how enjoyable was the book. And it was brought down because of that. So I won't spend too much more time on that. Um, uh, getting to the world building, this had a very clear world building and I, I, I enjoyed it, but I think we need a lot more in the next book because I felt like he was avoiding some of the world building so that he could use it later, which I understand. So I'm hoping that book two has more of that. There were some choices to take modern day concepts or companies and say that they have this grand impact that's still with us 150, 200 years later. And for an example, SpaceX is referenced a lot as a company. Um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is, is referenced. And cryptocurrency in and of itself, I could con conceptually see, but I'm not sure if Bitcoin is going to be around for that long. It was just an odd thing to have words that are modern day you know, specific to see it in a science fiction book. It was just a little odd, but still, um, uh, that's, that's not a huge detraction. That is a minor detail comparatively. Um, there, there are some things in the book sexually I don't particularly love, but that's, that's also one of those things that's a cultural thing. I, I don't appreciate that in the book either. So um, uh, generally, I did enjoy the book. I enjoyed the characters. I really understood the characters. And again, the authorial voice is so strong in this book. So I really appreciated that. It is a very unique book. This book is up for a... It's funny that it says that the tagline is Prometheus didn't finish the job. It's really funny that they use that because this book also got nominated for a Prometheus Award alongside my favorite book of last year, 
Lord of a Shattered Land. So it's kind of funny that it got nominated for a Prometheus Award. But um, that is my review of Theft of Fire, the uh, self-published book by Devin Erickson. If you've read this book, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And are there other self-pub books that you think I need to get into in the science fiction fantasy genre? Let me know all those thoughts in the comments section. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.